On this one here, uh, we've taken the battery out, okay, and we've decided to put the booster in place of the battery. Um, okay, so it's a little bit shorter than the units that I generally sell. I think it's about two inches shorter. But an, again, another example of finding places within the engine compartment. I've suggested to you guys moving the battery to the trunk. Okay, this is a this is an application where uh, we've done just that, and it's working out really well space-wise. Okay, this guy's got two oxygen sensors. We got one here, and there's there's one back in here. I know you can't see it, um, but this is a double. Uh, that's actually got four, uh, but we're only messing around with the upstream sensors. Okay, so in this application, again, this is just we just barely did this uh, today. Another one of Covert Engineering's uh, EPI devices. Okay. Now this one, well, I don't have any air fuel ratio gauges yet. We're going to get some later, but I just wanted to show you that uh, how the wiring uh, is, um, how the connections are flexible for the two O2 sensors. We got uh, two um, knobs for one for each sensor, the front and the back. Um, I used the gauge that's in that uh, other car to set these, and then I took it out uh, because uh, that's that belongs to that person's uh, car. So. I just kind of loaned it to set the gauges, and I set I set the signals exactly on this car exactly the way you just saw in the Prius. Okay, so some examples of uh, you know different uh, installation procedures. Okay, here's the battery in the trunk. Here's the battery in the trunk right here. Uh, just we just kind of slid it right right here. Uh, got a little plastic battery box. So you know, and using some good uh, six gauge wire in there. Okay, so uh, good connection to the the ground is solidly bolted down to the frame, and you can't see it because there's cardboard in there. But this is a you know a typical installation that you can do as far as moving the battery to the trunk and uh, getting the booster up into the front. Okay, we've done the we've done the FE adjustments. Um, so no mileage uh, no mileage postings on either one of these vehicles yet because the uh, the FEs are this is brand new today. Uh, I will say that without the FE units uh, on e neither one of these cars, the ECM procedures did not work. Um, the mileage on both of, uh, both of these cars pretty much stayed the same. And, and actually, uh, on this on this car, the high the town mileage, the city mileage, went down a little bit. But when the operator took the hose out of the intake, it actually went back up. So there's it's definitely affecting the ECM. It doesn't make sense that you know, the addition or removal of the hydroxy would drop the mileage like that. You know, you think the mileage would drop when you put it in if, that, if that's the problem. But that's not what's happening, so we know that it's a computer issue. And so we've addressed it with this FE unit, and uh, we'll be posting results. It'll take me a while to get these results, because these aren't my cars. You know, um, these are my friends um, that I'm doing. You know, these guys have volunteered. Um, to have these units installed, um, yeah, I've done it, you know, basically free labor. Uh, you know, just for testing purposes, so um, it takes me a while to get you know, you know to get these numbers because I'm not driving them every day. But I will be posting some numbers on both of these vehicles in the near future, including the Ranger, and I will be doing a, an FE installation on the uh, Smacksmobile too to see if I could tweak that 20% a little higher. Okay, so that's what's going on at Smackland along with everything else. Okay, and uh, stay tuned. Uh, subscribe to the videos. Uh, so you can get the latest updates on uh, performance results from our tests.